And before that, BBC Two brings you a network premiere. Johnny Depp stars as cult director Ed Wood, famed for his truly terrible films. Strong language, but a movie must, as Mark Cousin explains. Tonight on Movie Drone, the gentle world of gothic horror, Ed Wood and the Body Snatcher. A recent book on Hollywood in the 70s made the loud and clear point that the most talented directors of the American New Wave, Altman, Bob Raffleson, Peter Bogdanovich, Francis Coppola, William Friedkin, many others, were also at the same time at least the most horrible people. They were bastards to their women and friends and yet made great films. Edward Wood Jr., the subject of the film that we're about to watch, was the mirror image of this. He was a most decent man in an indecent town and he made garbage every day of his life. His cast and friends were a bunch of no-hopers, drug addicts, has-beens and weirdos. None had talent except Bella Lugosi. Wood loved them all, praised their every hammy fake line reading, paid their hotel bills. Like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, he gathered together these misfits and took them on a journey. As portrayed here in tonight's film, the journey was driven by Wood's unstoppable idealism, his goofy tenderness. In the very funny premiere of his absolutely appalling film, Bride of the Monster, he's oblivious to the contempt the audience feels for him. He's unembarrassable. You couldn't cut him with a knife. At the stroke of midnight, the witching hour, the ghouls arise from the dead. Ed Wood is the latest clown in director Tim Burton's great cinematic circus. He directed Beetlejuice at the grand old age of 29 and Batman at 30. The film was originated by screenwriters Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski, who went on to write The People vs. Larry Flint. Burton was initially only to produce, but he saw in Wood's life aspects of his own. He had worshipped and then befriended the old horror movie actor Vincent Price, just as Wood does to Bela Lugosi in this film. Slave of law. My gosh, Bella, how do you do that? You must be double jointed. And you must be young, Gideon. Like Burton's characters Beetlejuice and particularly Edward Scissorhands, Wood was an outsider whose enforced loneliness stoked the fires of his gothic imagination. Burton says he loved the main character's incredible optimism. He says, I started to do what I usually do, which is to look for emotional connections. The result, I think, is one of the most genuinely moving pictures of recent years and one of the best from America this decade. The center of this film for me is the scene set at Muscle and Frank's restaurant where Wood sees his hero Orson Welles in a booth. Oh my gosh, Orson Welles. They talk and Welles mentions his long delayed project to film Don Quixote. If you know Cervantes' great novel, everything might click into place here. Ed is just like the dawn, his eyes trained on the horizon. Look how often Depp looks into the distance, blind to the faults of the real world, hilariously suspending his disbelief. Ah, Mr. Wells, is it all worth it? It is when it works. You know, the one film of mine where I had total control, Kane, the studio hated it, but they didn't get to touch a frame. Ed. Visions are worth fighting for. Why spend your life making someone else's dreams? Wells thought that the relationship between the Don and Sancho Panza, along with that between Shakespeare's Falstaff and Prince Hal, were amongst the greatest in literature. There is some of the same intensity in the father-son relationship between Johnny Depp and Martin Landau in Burton's dream of a film. Pull the string! Pull the string! I could go on all night about this picture, one of the few lines repeated twice in Ed Wood is tacky, but could be said about nearly every character in Wood's world. Home, home, I have no home, hunted, despised, living like an animal, the jungle is my home, says Lugosi. Bill Murray's baptism scene is one of the funniest I can remember. Do you reject Satan and all his evils? Sure. 
The whole film is as acute as Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, I think, but mixed with some of John Waters' camp irony. It's a glorious act against the way Hollywood buries things heartlessly. Martin Landau won an Oscar, and it took just $6 million in America.